Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming to our Pacific Cast Studio. So today we do have a cooking up part here to show you uh, his uh, own recipes. I see numbers of our recipe here. Later, you can feel free. Oh, just sit down there. You can please. You know, I think Abba would prefer you come over to play around or you you try to do the setting by yourself. Okay. So while we are waiting for the rest, maybe we can start now. Yeah. Yes? Sure. Yeah. Sure. So pass back to Abba. Thank you. A very good morning to you all. Thanks for coming on a Sunday morning. Uh, actually, I just came back from Kuantan yesterday. Hi. Uh, initially, I was thinking to buy back some uh, local delicacy. Then I was thinking Kuantan, eh? salted fish. Uh. If I buy salted fish uh, later, everyone run away. <laughs> so at the, uh, at the end, uh, the, at least the ginger we use today is from Bentong. Uh. It's the Bentong ginger. Uh. Okay, so now, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank Pacifica. Uh, this is John, by the way. He's the general manager of Pacifica. So later, anything technical, if you want to know more about this product, you can talk to him or his colleague. Yeah. All right. The so, black one, yes, feel free to grab them. No <laughs> so basically, we have two products here. One is the, uh, the Forge, which is actually a steamer. The second one is actually called the Voltex, which is a blender. So uh, later, we will actually show you how it actually works. But today, uh, my focus, uh, at least on my side, I will actually focus more on the steamer. Okay. So of course, uh, you can also use your own steamer at home. Lah. No obligation. Don't worry. Don't worry. Feel relaxed. I want you just, just play around. Have fun. Just have fun with us today. So today, I actually pre I'm going to make, I think, about four or five different dishes. Uh, some of it is actually my signature dishes from my YouTube channel, especially the steamed chicken with uh, chicken accents. So we will go through with the different flow, uh, start one by one later, hopefully by we finish, by the time when we are doing the final dish, all the others is, will be ready. Okay, so first of all, you come here, come over here better. Go, go to my opposite. Okay, so today I'm going to start with this uh, making a chicken soup. The chicken I'm using is actually called Ma Chao Ji. Okay, it's one type of free range chicken, which is uh, uh, the difference between this Ma Chao Ji and the normal free range chicken is that the normal free range chicken is very sweet, but the meat is more chewy. So this one uh, is very sweet, but it is not chewy. So that's, that's the good part of it, but it's a little bit difficult to find. Uh. It is slightly more expensive than the normal free range chicken. So I have some free range chicken here and I have some Huai San, uh, Chinese yam. Chinese yam. So I have some Huai San here. Usually Huai San, the moment, let me take out the Huai San for you. I still have some behind. So if you have if you haven't used a Huai San before, this is how it looks like. It's a root. Or some pe sometimes people call it San Yao. Okay? So this is actually very good for your, if you are coughing. Actually nowadays, uh, if you cough, uh, you yourself will feel very scary. And then all the other people, the whole world will, will look at you very scary also. So uh, this will be very good for your cough, okay? Uh, but if you're having some uh, stomach pain, don't take Huai San. It's no good for your stomach pain, all right? So what you do here is this. When you buy this, so this is actually a root. You, will, you, you need to remove the skin, the outer layer, and then you will start feeling some sliminess on your hand. It's full of sliminess. So you cut them into uh, pieces, uh, small chunks, and put them under water. If not, it will oxidize very easy. I also added a little bit of salt inside the water. Lah. Okay? So don't worry about the sliminess or sometimes they call it the mucus. Don't worry about that. Right after it is cooked, it will all gone one. Okay? So that's a bit on the uh, white sun. It's actually a very, uh, very nice herbs actually. Yes, it's actually a very nice herbs. Yes, yes. Yes, and so actually the, in Malaysia, there are two types of Huai San you can find. This is the, the, the size of this, you know already, this is more for the local ones. 
There's one which is more thinner. That is a Japanese one. A lot more expensive. I think it's a, I think the price is maybe twice more twice as more expensive. Okay. <laughs> Cannot see, yeah. Uh. <laughs> maybe let me see. Uh, but later they have to come back here to 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 do it. Oh. <laughs> uh, so maybe I will get one of you to help. Uh Ding, you want to help? Come, come. So we need to use, oh, I haven't finished with the ingredient yet. So of course, we have the Frigian chicken here. The Hawaii sun, after cut, you soak under water. Some red carrot, right? Some yu zhu yok zhu. Don't ask me how to read in English. The English name is very difficult to read. <laughs> very difficult to pronounce. But yokchuk lah, huh? few pieces of yokchuk and goji berries. Yeah, goji berries. Just rinse under water. And what you need to do is just put everything into the inner pot. Uh, which pot should we use? So this forge actually comes with two kinds of uh, steamer. This is, we are going to start with this pot later. We are going to use the fish glass pot as well. Come. Uh, the, can we have the glove? Just now I took out the glove already. Where is it? Eh? <coughs> we? Just now we took out the glove already. Get a glove for her. Uh, is, it, is it this one? Ah, get a glove for her. <coughs> because the first round, well, the first round, our guests did not wear glove. We are we were scolded by some of the netizen. <laughs> okay, so you will start by putting in some of the uh, free range chicken. Just put inside. Okay, carrot. Put inside. This one you just take out the. Yeah, just take out. All of it, right? Yes. Put all of it. Lah. And then you leave a space in the center. Leave a space in the center. Yeah, because there's this thing. Ooh. The energy bar. So I have to leave. Yeah, leave a space in the center and then put this in. Okay, and then close it. Just close it. Do I have to twist? You just... Actually, this one face is Oh, okay. Something is blocking. Okay. Once you hear the click sound, then it's... It's done. Then you move, put this over here inside. Okay. okay. Then we put the Start. sting. Press the sting function. Uh, this chicken soup we will steam it for about. Let's give it about forty-five minutes. Okay, start. Okay. That's all. So one, once, once it is start, before serving, just put a little bit of salt will do. Okay, what's the volume? What's the volume? Huh? Three liter. liter. I mean now at least inside now. Yeah, the pot okay. is three liter. Now how much? Uh? Now, now how many? Now how much? Uh? How much are uh, cooking? How much I'm cooking? Uh? Yeah. It's actually one pot. Uh, it's actually for about four person. Usually it's for about four person. And I just realized we forgot one thing. We didn't put water. <laughs> but this machine, it can cook without water. Because it actually 
it actually forces out the steam to cook. So at the end of the day, it's just like the, the Yunnan Qi Guo Ji, uh, where it will, the steam itself will actually create, will eventually become water. But because today we need more soup, today we need more soup, so we actually need to put water on this. Can you pause it? You can pause it by just pressing the uh, steam again. So this machine, you can pause it halfway to add in any extra ingredient by pressing the same button. Then it will just pause. After pause, you can take it out. Come take it out, we add water. <coughs> well, already got steam. So when you put in water, it actually has a maximum sign. There's a maximum sign inside here. So try not to put more than a maximum sign. If not, it may overflow. I can put a little bit more. This is the Huai San water, right? Mm. Cannot put too much because the Huai San water got a bit of salt. Is it locked? Is it locked? Okay, just so they hear the clip sound. Yeah, so Carry on. Press back. press back, start button. So now you will continue. Okay? Okay, thank you, Ling. Thank you. Let me keep this one first. So don't worry if you forgot to put anything in your steamer because at any one time you can always pause it by pressing back the same button. Then you can just take it out. Just remember. It's actually hot inside, so every time you open, uh, you must always make opening outwards so that the steam will not hurt your hand. Always open up outwards. Okay, now let's do the second soup. Can we have a volunteer? Any volunteer? Come on, Mr. Jai. Come, 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 just, just try it. Like this. It's really so very easy. It's really very easy. Can I have a second inner pot? Okay, the second one, I'm actually going to make a free range chicken with bitter melon. So, of course, this uh, for those who cannot take bitter, uh, actually bitterness is good for our body, especially recently when the weather is so hot and humid. The bitter is actually very good. All right, so let me open this. Put in the chicken first. Glove. Mm, luckily, you reminded. Glove, if not, we will be scolded again. <laughs> You know, sometimes if you really want to make some your own chicken accents at home, eh, don't add water. Then it will be extremely concentrated. Very, very concentrated. Okay, put in the chicken first. Try to leave a center, keep the center empty. Lah. Just to leave some space for the energy bar. Put, put the chicken on the sides. Then put in the bitter melon. Not the water, the water is salted. Yes, 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 yes. And a few slices of ginger. Okay, thank you. And now we remember to add the water. <laughs> now, put it in the water slowly. So there is a maximum sign. See? Don't, don't go over the maximum sign as you pour.
Okay, slightly lesser, we can actually pull a little bit more. Alright, so now you just try to, let me, let me help you lah, because you are wearing a glove right. Okay, John, can you help? Just double check the cover. Thank you, that's all. Uh, just put steam, okay, this one though, we don't steam too long. The longer we steam, uh, the more bitter the soup is going to be. You can just press the surface. Just press yeah. sur any surface any first. Surface. Then you choose steam. And this one, let's do just uh, 30 minutes. Uh. Oh. Press start. Yep. That's all. Done. Thank you very much. Okay. I've said this earlier, but I'm going to say this again. After I used this, the first time I used this particular steamer is actually the time where I managed to make my, the best soup that I ever made in my life. On one very simple reason. Just now you see us putting in the, the, the water, all right? So we are putting in about maybe about uh, maybe two, two, bowl, two small bowls of water, roughly. So if I normally cook at home, the moment when we use a normal pot, we will, if I cook for three adults, then I will put three bowls of water. So even before cooking, uh, before starting cook, we already diluted the soup. We already diluted the soup. But this one, we only put half of the, we only uh, put half of the water level required. And as I mentioned just now, it can also work even without you putting any water. Depend how concentrated you want it. So we are only putting half of the water, but at the end of the day, it will still turns out to be about uh, what, uh, uh, amount of soup, uh, which is enough for about three to four adults. So this is why the soup that's coming up is actually very concentrated. It's actually coming up from the chicken together with the steam. And that's how the Yunnan Qi Guo Ji actually works. And this is the only the reason, that is exactly the reason why the soup that I made from out of this steamer is actually uh, so good. It really tastes so good. Yeah, because it's very, very concentrated. And you don't need to put any other thing. At the end of the day, before serving, put a bit of salt will do. And uh, after I, I bought this particular machine, eh, initially my wife was selling, was actually telling me, you are bringing too many things into our house. I don't have a big kitchen. So at the end of the day, these two machines actually put, on, put in my living hall. It's not in my kitchen. My kitchen, no more space already. <laughs> totally no more. So they are complaining. But after about two months, after about two months using these two items, my wife made coffee from this machine every day, every day, every day. This one, my mother-in-law used it to cook soup every day. They are the one who complain, but they are the one who use it every day. And there's actually a very good reason why they use it every day. Because these two machine wash by itself. You, this one, after blending everything, it will has a, it has an auto clean function. This thing, the only thing you need to wash, of course, is the pot lah. All the other, all the other piping inside, it has an auto clean function that you can use after a few rounds of using. So basically, I think to me, any machines or any new equipments, uh, whatever you want to buy, if it's those very ma ma fun uh, very troublesome one uh, you know, my friend bought the, the cold press juice, juicer, uh, 2,000 ringgit, uh, cold press juicer. Uh, 
they're so how good, how good. I'm sure it's very good also. But all my friends, after buying, uh, one month later, no more use. Very difficult to wash. So I think the washing part itself is the one that really makes people feel like using it. You think my wife will, will, will want to use this every day if she has to wash the machine? Uh? Cannot be. Uh. So I think this part, this is the very important part of this particular machine. Uh. Okay? But of course, if you don't have the machine, you can use your own pot at home, no problem. Right, now, this is supposed to be a fish pot. This thing is supposed to be a fish pot. See, it actually, there is actually a fish shape inside, which actually raises the fish, erases the fish surface, okay? But now, I'm going to use this to steam chicken. Maybe this one I do it myself. I, I, I don't like to wear gloves when I cook. So, nepotism, please don't scold Appa. <laughs> but I have washed my hand at least 20 times from this morning. <laughs> okay. Now, this one let me do it myself. This is a little bit more work. Okay, so uh, same thing. We have the free range chicken. I have some Chinese cabbage, which is going to add the whole thing very sweet. I have some Japanese shiitake mushroom, soak, cut into half. And I have a lot of ginger. You are my follower, you all should know I'm a ginger person. I'm also a garlic person. So these two things, if you see, I put in, I should put a lot. Of but this is all, but in all my, all my videos, I always tell people there's no rules in Appa's kitchen. There's no rules in Appa's kitchen. So if you cook, cook it for your family, your family doesn't like ginger that much, put lesser. Lah. It's, just, it's just that it's very simple. Okay, now let's do a bit of uh, arrangement here. At the bottom, I'm going to put in the veggie. You know, at the end of the day, uh, the best part about this dish is not the chicken. You know which one? The veggie. Later in the end of the day, eh, the best part of this dish is not the chicken, but the veggie, which is the cheapest thing. Because why? Because it's actually at the bottom. It's at the bottom, so you actually soak up all the nice things. Now, if you want to make it look very nice, of course, you will put, now you will put second layer, the chicken, then you will put the mushroom on top. But for me, making it nice is uh, making it looking nice is not the most important part. To me, the most important part is how to make it taste nicer rather than looks nicer. So, second layer, I'm going to put the mushroom. Second layer, I'm going to put the mushroom. And then, I'm going to put the chicken on top of the mushroom. So later, again, when this dish is done, the extremely yummy part of this particular dish is not the chicken. It's the number one, the Chinese cabbage. Number two, mushroom. The mushroom is going to soak up all the nature goodness from the chicken itself. Okay? And then one thing about the chicken. I know many people always like to de-skin and remove all the chicken fat. I do agree that sometimes the chicken originally, the fat is a little bit too much. But my suggestion, uh, don't remove all the chicken fat. Because chicken fat, you know, you know when your, your soup, uh, when your, any of your meat soup, if you want it to be uh, sweet and taste really good, the sweetness doesn't come the sweetness actually doesn't come from the meat. The sweetness doesn't come from the bone. The sweetness actually comes from the fat, the chicken fat. So do not remove it. Please keep some of the chicken fat. All right. Now, next thing. To be very frank, I've never tried this dish using this pot at home. 
You want to explore, ah? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Because it actually looks quite high now. But later, don't forget all the ch the, the 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 veggie will shrink. All the veggie will shrink. So now is my favorite bentong ginger. And just some uh, goji berries on top to uh, garnish it. Do we add this one? No. no. Not now. Let me wash my hand first. This is chicken stock. Add a little bit. I put some chicken stock. Don't put the excess first. Uh, I, I made a video for branch chicken before. They actually specifically instructed me, do not cook your chicken accent. If you cook your chicken accents, the nutrient will be lost. So you, you should actually just add in right before you want to serve. Okay, so we leave this to the end, and now we will we can actually put it. Give it a bit of uh, seasoning. I'm just going to put a bit of salt. You can also put a bit of saoxing wine. Today I try to make it as halal as possible. If not, you can put some saoxing wine. Okay. Okay, just put a, a little bit of salt on top. Close this. John, can you help? Okay, this one less steamy for about, say, 25 minutes. Okay. Yep. I actually see uh, marinate with a little bit of salt, but optional. You can marinate with a bit of salt if you want. Yeah. Okay. So clear this one first. I so much simple. I cannot see all the used uh, bowl and place on my kitchen table one. I have to clear. Clear, Sini, so more kasi clear. Thank you. Eh? Okay, now, finish with the chicken. We still got two fish. I prepared two fish for you all, and I'm very, we are very lucky because because I managed to find it. This has been in my fridge for the past couple of days, the freezer. But look at the color of the ice. You can, it's crystal clear. Even it's already inside my freezer for a couple of days. Why a couple of days? Because this place, uh, this fishmonger only sell. He only sell uh, near my place, Taman Desa, every Friday morning. This is not a sponsored video, huh? <laughs> Every Friday morning. Only he sells this fish. Pai Tian. White dog fish. It belongs to the similar, uh, same uh, group of uh, species like snapper. This is not Pak Zou, it's called Pai Tian. Pak Tim. Okay? So, it looks like a snapper, but why is it different? You can actually look at the body of the fish. It's actually very thick, very fatty. So why is it I match I my this is fish this fish becomes my personal favorite because the meat is super tender, so tender that it is actually almost almost la not exactly but almost like 
Hunchback Grouper. Lou Xi Ban. It's not as tender as Lou Xi Ban, but almost there, maybe about 70%. And this is about 55 ringgit per kg. Lou Xi Ban uh, is close to 150 to 200 ringgit per kg. So if you find, if you happen to see this white dog, Bai Tian, they call it Bai Tian fish, uh, from where you buy your normal, normal seafood, uh, give it a try. Give it a try. Okay? Now, the thing about using this fish pot is it has a shape. So, the fish, of the, you, the, what, the fish that you use, you have to, uh, somehow the measurement must be able to go in. If you, are, you want the whole fish to go in, you should be looking at something below 800. 700, this is, this two, one is 750, one is 700. I think one is maybe close to 800. So, I actually trim away the tail. Trim away the tail so that the whole fish can go inside. So if you use, uh, I tried cooking this using a Chinese prawn fruit, Tao Tei, Chinese prawn fruit before, 500 gram. 500 gram can go in. Bigger than 500 gram cannot. Cannot go in already. Okay, so you have to look at it. But there's some people say, hey, cannot, I have a big family, I, I, want, I, I usually cook about 1.2 kg. Can. Cut half. You cook the, the fish head and then you cook the tail. Lah. Cut it into half. Lah. Huh? You cut it into half. Lah. That's what, that's what that's, actually you can buy uh, extra, extra pot if you want. Okay? Pisau mana? Ini pisau. So, of course, before you want to steam the fish, oops. Always make a few slit on the body of the fish. Cut it vertically, then push it to the front. Where's the knife I bought myself? Cut Siamese knife, mana? Siamese pisau, mana? Siamese. Okay. Uh, not just the feeling, but the sharpness also <laughs> a little bit different. Okay. So, cut the fish. You will notice I actually make a slit. I, I go vertical, then go, go uh, forward. So that it can actually create more, it creates more uh, surface, yeah? It will actually create more surface so that your fish can be steamed more evenly. So what we do here is we can actually, uh, we can actually marinate the fish with a little bit of Salt. Please, whenever you wash your fish, why is it your fish got fishy smell? Because you did not clean the fish kidney properly. So the center blood, the center part, the blood is actually the fish kidney. Make sure you clean off the fish. Sometimes it has a very thin membrane on top. Use a scissor to cut it through. Remove all the blood. The blood is the kidney and that is the source of the uh, fishy smell. So now we have this pot here. Like I mentioned, it's already raised. You don't have to put chopstick. You know normally we put chopstick below? So this one, you don't need to put chopstick. They already raised the fish for you. So very, very convenient. Put it inside. Then we will put few pieces of ginger. I will put few pieces of ginger inside the cavity. Then few pieces of ginger on top. Close it. Seventeen, eighteen minutes lah. Give it eighteen minutes lah. Uh, 
So, uh, from pers my, my personal uh, experience, if you want to steam any fish using this particular machine, it should be between 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, why 15 to 20 minutes? Number one, because most of the time when we steam fish is actually normal, somewhere around 15 minutes. But this machine, for the last final two minutes, you, the steam will stop. It will let it rest. So that later when you take the, 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 um, the bowl later, it's not too hot also. Lah. So, it, so meaning you have to minus off minimum two minutes. And then for the first 20 or 21 minutes, that is the time it uses to generate the steam. So we will take about two and a half minutes away. So this is where I say put about 18 minutes there. Okay, so if it's bigger or thicker, even thicker, then you have to go for 20 minutes already. So uh, we will steam the fish, then I will make different sauce for it. Uh, today, I'm actually going to show you, you know, many people like Teochew steam, Teochew uh, steam fish, but they always fail doing the Teochew steam fish because they always say the broth doesn't taste as good. They put the sour veggie, but the, the, the sour taste never really come out. So I'm going to show you uh, another way of how you can make it much stronger, but we will steam the fish first, okay? We will prepare the broth later. This one, I will just use a normal uh, Cantonese steam. Okay. Second fish, second fish pot. Put in the fish. Put some ginger inside the cavity and some on top. Sorry. Where's my ball? John? Yes. Also seven, about 18 minutes. Lah. 18 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Hmm? Okay, now let's prepare the broth. Like I said, I'm going to show you how to make a stronger taste uh, Teochew steamed fish. Okay, Teochew steamed fish. But this is not the normal conventional way of doing this. They don't do this way in the restaurant because it takes more time. But let's, let's, let's try this method. Okay, first thing first, we have the ham choy. We are going to saute the salted mustard green to remove some of the water inside. Uh, just now, before I use, I actually already wash it under water and squeeze out something so that uh, squeeze it out so that it will not be too salty. Okay, so why am I uh, pan frying this, dry frying right now? Is uh, two purpose. First purpose, we want to remove the. There will be a bit of a, a moist, moist taste, moist taste inside this veggie. So you can actually by by dry roast it, dry fry it. It will actually re help to remove. That's number one. Number two, you remove the water inside. By removing the water inside, this veggie will become sweeter also. Okay, the taste will actually become sweeter. So let's, uh, just a couple of minutes, I need someone to help me to pan, saute this. Ah, the heat is coming out already. Can some, Lin, you want to help? Come. Sorry, uh, you don't mind using this. Uh. <laughs> Many people scolded Appa for using a spoon to cook. Uh, <laughs> Many people ask me why is it I like using a spoon to cook? Because it's very light. <laughs> because it's very light. 
uh, no other particular reason. Some say, Appa, you look very unprofessional by using a spoon to cook. He's right. I'm not a professional chef. Actually, it's not hot because we are using electric stove. If we are using the normal fire stove, uh, then no. Lah. The one will be very hot. When you, because I use electric stove at home also. So you don't feel that hot. Uh. Do you feel hot? No. Uh, see? Not hot. How long do I need to? Just continue doing it uh, until I call you, ask you to stop. <laughs> but don't let it burn. Uh. Please keep on okay, okay. saute. Just saute this for a couple of minutes. Yeah, just for a couple of minutes, then we will put in the second ingredient, which is... Can you guess which is the second ingredient I'm going to put in? I have some tomato, I have some ginger, I have some chili, I have some mushroom. Shiitake mushroom. Mushroom. After that, we will put in the mushroom. Well, you all cannot imagine I get scolded every day. <laughs> so you remove the moist inside, inside the, the salted veggie so that you don't have the, the fermented smell that much. It will taste much better. Actually, I have another version which I posted a few, few days ago. I mix it with pork. Lah. But today I try to make hala for you. Hala today. Lah. Uh, a hala version. No, no. It, it not go chow ta. Okay, come. <laughs> After that, I'm going to put in the shiitake mushroom. Dry rosa uh, is actually one technique that many chefs like to do on certain ingredients. Uh, salted veggie is one thing. Another thing is the shiitake mushroom. Shiitake mushroom is also very suitable for dry roasting. So that the, the, the shiitake mushroom, will actually, the taste will actually come out. Now I'm going to put in a bit of oil because I have some garlic. very fragrant. I myself cannot tahan. Ginger. No. Looks similar, right? This is my old one. This is smaller. The one I use is much bigger. And the one is quite heavy, actually. But both of them are from Thermos, Malaysia. Oops. Am I not supposed to say it? <laughs> This one is already no more in production. The one you are using now? It's exactly the same thing. No more in production? No, oh, no, 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 the one is available. Huh? Yeah, yeah, the one is available. This is the one which uh, is no more in production. Okay. So everything inside there is a little bit salty. I'm going to balance it. with a teaspoon of uh, sugar. Actually, many people are very scared of using stainless steel because stainless steel gets chow ta very easily. Got burned very easily, but I love, I love chow ta. <laughs> no, the, the, the burn smell, okay? Once this is done, it is ready, put in your chicken stock. What happened to my stuff?
bring it to a boil, and this is done. Hmm? Let it thicken a little bit. Uh, I have some chili here. Just how we try when we cut also, uh, already we feel very choking. <laughs> so I'm having second thought of putting it inside. I may put it in when we want to serve, lah, not put now. If I put now, it's going to be very spicy. I think I ac accidentally bought the Thai chili padi. There's two, two kinds of chili padi that you try not to buy. Number one is Vietnamese. If you bought the Vietnamese chili padi, I'm telling you, it's going to burn your whole house. So actually now, if you have some tofu, you can also put in the tofu. If you have some, uh, you know, some, sometimes the, uh, they put the, what they call uh, plum, sour plum, the, the marinated one, sour plum, you can also put it inside. Okay? So if you do this this way, uh, I can assure you your broth for the, the Teochew steamed fish, uh, the flavor will be very strong. Most people just put the ham choy, everything on top of the fish and let it steam, right? Uh, the flavor will not come out. One. Which one finished cooking? Which one? What is this one? Uh? Soup. <laughs> Which soup? Second uh? soup. Huh? Second soup. Bitter God. Okay. So one is ready. Let's say your family is not back yet. Don't open it. Don't open it because this in, once it is, it is locked, uh, uh, the heat retain, it will actually retain all the heat inside for up to eight hours. So this why sometimes you can actually pre-cook it if you want. You can even preset the cooking process. And some many, many of my followers were telling me, how come my Teochew steamed fish is not sour enough? They always got this problem. So by doing this, it should already feel quite sour, but I will try later. What happens if it is still not sour enough? What do you do? No. White vinegar. But you cannot put now. You put right before you want to eat, you want to serve. Because white vinegar, the moment you cook it, the sour, the sour will be gone. Okay, so later if I taste is if, if I find it not sour enough, then only I will add the white vinegar, but which I personally feel it should be sour enough already, using this way of cooking. Okay? Right, it's already boiling. Let me test it. Lah. I could use a little bit more sourish. So I will add a little bit of white vinegar towards the end. But generally, the f it is already very flavorful. I just now only want to keep it uh, hot and wait for the fish. And then, of course, we got one more fish where we are going to just do a very simple uh, Cantonese style. Cantonese style of uh, steamed fish sauce. Can I have a bowl? Uh? This one is very simple. You can either use a chicken broth. Of course, I used out my chicken broth for that just, just now. Or you can just put some uh, purified water. So this is for the second fish. Eh? I'm going to put in a bit of uh, oyster sauce. Always remember, if you are using the Kamke oyster sauce, after you open, you must put it in the fridge because it doesn't carry any preservative. This is light soya sauce. For two tablespoons. Many people ask for my recipe, seriously, uh, over the years. But the thing is, I never measure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, got, I, got, I never measure. So if I never measure, how, how do I tell how, how many? Okay. 
I put there agak agak also sometimes, so I will say agak agak lah. But seriously, there are some people uh, who cannot cook without a recipe one. She will say, I'm totally lost. <laughs> Actually, there's another reason why I don't put res written recipe. Seriously, your and this is about half. Uh, this is about half teaspoon of sugar. Your your kitchen and my kitchen is different. Your stove and my stove is different. Your seasoning and my seasoning is different. You look at the, the salt that I'm using right now. It's the extremely fine one. At home, I don't use this type. I use the slightly coarse, slightly bigger one. Okay? So, every time when you're using different kind of seasoning, different brand, if you follow my, my measurement, uh, I'm telling you it's going to come out different also. So, sometimes it's very difficult. And what else do I add in? I'm going to put in... Uh, if you want to a bit of color, I can put in a bit of dark soya sauce. This is more for the color. And we want to give it a bit of flavor. Now, two thing, one, one thing that I always, I always recommend to my followers, always make your garlic oil, onion oil at home. Always make sure you have these two. Why? Because these two, they are not used as oil. They are used as seasoning. You all know Appa don't use MSG. Appa don't use chicken powder. How do I make my dish so flavorful? All these things. These are natural seasoning. Okay? And sometimes people say, Appa, how do I differentiate between which one is garlic oil, which one is onion oil? Sometimes people put sticker, right? I'm telling you, uh, you put sticker also, you can simpan wrongly. Uh. <laughs> so I always told my kaka after she made for me, put in some garlic inside. Put in some onion inside so that it won't go wrong. See? And then another very popular question is, Appa, when do I use onion oil? When do I use garlic oil? Only heaven knows. Lah. <laughs> <laughs> if you personally prefer the flavor of onion oil, you put lah, more onion oil. Right? So it depends on your personal. But they, I will give you the recommended oil. Usually, if you are doing bihun, cha bihun, use which one? Onion oil for cha bihun. Fried rice, which one? Fried rice. Egg fried rice. Now everyone talk about Uncle Roger, egg fried rice. Use which oil? Garlic oil. But is anyone going to die if I put onion oil inside my fried rice or not? No la, it's okay one. It's really okay, okay? So there's basically no rule in Zappa Kitchen, but I will give you my recommendation. Okay, so put these two. Now, uh, this one, which one is better? The fish? Onion and garlic. Garlic. Ah. So this is... Seasoning. The oil here is actually the seasoning. By the way, many of you may not realize, actually most of the food that I cook at home in all my videos, uh, they are all my family dinner. I never purposely go and make any video for the purpose of that particular recipe. All the video you saw uh, that night, that's what my family is eating. Uh. Okay? And you will actually notice, if you notice today, uh, actually the, the food that I cook is a little bit plain one. Because I'm cooking for my wife, I'm cooking for my mother-in-law. They don't take the, the, uh, the, the food as strong taste as me. So I usually go less oil, less salt. I think that's the beauty of a home cook, uh, home cooking. Lah, because you control what you want to eat. Lah. Okay? So I put salt. This, this one, anything else I forgot. Lah. Uh... Don't put saucing wine on this fish. Uh. I don't think it goes very well. Okay? I'm going to put a little bit of this. Fish sauce. Some people say, Appa, I cannot tahan fish sauce because it's very fishy. <laughs> and it is very salty. Fish sauce is very salty, so you don't, cannot put a lot. Just put a little bit of cups here. This cup, very small cup. And um, 
Oh, many people ask me which is the number one fish sauce in the world. For me, lah, this one. It's from Vietnam. Okay, so all the other brand don't sue APA. And this is also not sponsored. They never pay me a single cent. I don't even know how to read their name. But this is the best. You don't believe me? Go and buy few and go and try. This is really the best. Okay. Uh, what else? We can give it a bit of uh, white pepper. Which one is done? Eh? Almost all. Oh, okay. It's actually all. It's actually all? Eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everything done? Everything done. Okay. Can you put oil components? Yes. Can you oil components? Inside where? There that you are doing. I put, I, put, I put garlic oil. Uh, I put Ma, garlic oil. Ma, you? Huh? Ma, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Can. Yeah. Can. And uh, I think if I say this, uh, Malaysian, uh, Malaysian sesame oil company will no longer look for APA to sponsor. <laughs> but, but, but my personal preference, preference of sesame oil is either Japanese or Korean. Uh, yeah, I know. After I say this, I will not <laughs> get any business from them anymore. It's okay. We always, we always look for good food. <laughs> no, but seriously, Japanese and Korean sesame oil, they are the most expensive. At least about three times the price. At least three times the price. But you will tell the difference. Okay, so this one is done. Uh, can I have the fish? Can I have one fish? So the first thing after you steam the fish is you will see a lot of fishy water inside. The first thing you need to can you, can you see fishy water? We have to remove all the fishy water. Throw it away. Throw it away. Okay. Of course, some uh, one time there was one one uh, netizen trying to argue with me. Apa, you so stupid. That's the nature goodness. It's okay if she like it, she can keep it, but. All Chinese restaurants will throw it away. Okay? Because that is the source of fishiness. So, oh, how you want to pour or uh, remove the water? Of course, one easier way is just to get a spatula, take out the fish and put it onto another plate. Lah. That's one way. Another way is if you want to serve this dish using this pot very easily, there's two holes here. Here, right? There's two holes here. So you use a cloth to help you to uh, hold it. Then you can just pour it off. Pour off the uh, fishy water. Lah. If you don't feel comfortable, you can just take out the fish and put it onto uh, another serving plate. So this one we will do the the Hong Kong style steam fish. You can remove the ginger. I don't have another plate. Okay. Pour in the fish sauce, steam fish sauce. Some people say, Apa, how come you never cook your steam fish sauce? No, you don't have to. You don't have to. But if you want, yes, go and cook it. Just, just bring it to a boil. Then, garlic, fried garlic. Again, you see me putting ginger already again. Fresh coriander. By the way, when you have fresh coriander, do not throw away, do not throw away the roots 
because the roots can be used as a fresh seasoning. It's very fragrant. Okay, first fish done. Can I have a second fish? Okay, let me remove the fishy water first. Where's my cloth? You have to be very careful uh, if you want to do this. Uh, if not, just like I said, the, actually the safest way uh, is really just to take out the fish. Uh. Okay, so this will be the Teochew steamed fish. Always remember, open the pot outwards so that the steam will not hurt your hand. I'm going to take out the ginger. Ah, hot. And I would like my sauce to be a little bit more spicy. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, vinegary, sour. Okay, done. Give it a few stir. Okay, always remember don't cook your vinegar. Don't forget, we have some uh, accidentally bought Thailand chili padi. Very spicy. Okay. The second fish is also done. Oops. Where did this come from? You want the chicken? Yes. Do I have to do anything with the chicken? I think it's all there except for salt. Oh, this one. Uh, I don't have to do anything actually. This one I don't. Oh, chicken accent. Wow. Oh, this is so good. Ah, oh, so nice. Okay, now. Actually, uh, the chicken accent between 20 years ago and today is very much different. 20 years ago, uh, I cannot tan the, 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 the smell and the flavor. But now, it tastes very good. Right. Okay, chicken done. Any other thing? Okay, take it out. Take it out. Which one? I also don't know which one is which one already. <laughs> again, again, always remember when you want to open this facing outwards so that you will not hurt your hand. This is what? Huai uh? san, is it? Huai yeah. san. Okay, the only thing you need to do about half teaspoon of salt. If you prefer saltier, of course, you can put more. But that's what I'm going to put for this one. And this is the bitter melon, is it? Yeah. Oh. Also the same. I'm going to put about half teaspoon of salt. And it's going to be naturally sweet. The sweet actually is come from the nature ingredient. This one is coming from the Chinese yam, from the carrot, and of course from the, the yokchuk, yeah? The yokchuk. Ah, oh, so good. This is the bitter melon. This will be a little bit bitter, lah, to be very frank. But bitter is good for us. Lah. Huh? Okay, done. Everything done? You all can... Yeah, yeah. Move towards the, the front.
Casi, esto sigue acá. So basically, one hour I cook five dishes. So home cooking is actually very easy. Anyone having a little bit of flu? I think this, this dishes will help. Lah. Mm, actually, not, not bad. Looks good. <laughs> okay. Give it a try. Okay, anyone want to try, please? There's a plate here. Yeah, there's a plate. So, for those watching on Facebook, thank you all for watching. And I hope you all can learn something from here as well. For those who are interested in the, the Forge and the Voltex here, uh, you can get, I will try to put more information uh, inside the description box later. Uh, for those who are not interested, no problem, you, you can use your own pot or your own cookware to cook this dish. No worries, no worries at all. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.